the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. It's been just over six months since the Paris Climate Agreement was signed. The purpose of the agreement is to stop the rise in global average temperatures to well below 2 degrees Celsius and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5. To date, 178 countries have signed the agreement. These countries then submitted plans to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, outlining what climate actions they intend to take after 2020. That's year 2020. These sub submissions are known as intended, nationally determined contributions indices. Our next guest recently co-authored a scientific report published in the journal Nature, which analyzes the indices and finds them sadly lacking at the task at hand. Joining us now from Luxembourg, Austria, is Dr. Yori Rogel. He's a research scholar at the Energy Program of the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. He's a lead author on several policy syntheses reports by the UN Environment Program and is contributing author of the fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Rogel. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So let's just begin uh, uh, with the pledges that each country has made thus far. Are they ag adequate in addressing the problem at hand? Well, adequacy of the pledges has to be seen in the larger framework of or the larger context of the Paris Agreement. And uh, as you already indicated, the Paris Agreement aims at limiting warming to well below two degrees and pursuing efforts to limit warming to 1.5. From a geophysical side of the problem, that means that we need to keep global emissions within a certain emission budget or a carbon budget. That means that at a certain moment in time, the emissions, the global emissions, need to become zero in order for this budget not to continue to be accumulated. Now, at this point, the, the pledges of or the INDCs, as we call them, they do not put us yet on a pathway that will actually reach and will reach this budget or will stay within this budget uh, during the 21st century. Now, one of the disturbing assessments from your report is that there, uh, in all likelihood, we will exceed that 1.5 degree mark that's been uh, set uh, in terms of limiting temperature rise. How did you come to that conclusion from your uh, assessment? Well, what, what we did, we did actually a meta-analysis of various literature studies that were out there in, uh, in the public, and we tried to understand exactly what what, uh, how they relate to each other. From this, we then get a more robust assessment of what emissions or what the INDCs will add up to in the year 2030. And because limiting warming to below 1.5 implies that we have a very tight budget of emissions that we still can emit, uh, we found that with the, with the current pledges or the pledges that are currently on the table, uh, this, em this emission budget would already be exhausted by 2030. Now, in the Paris Agreement, there's a, a concept of equity spelled out in detail. What does this mean for uh, countries? Well, the equity concept or equity within the context of the Paris Agreement and of climate mitigation means that not every country has contributed equally to the problem and also not every country has equal means to tackle the problem. And therefore, some kind of fair burden sharing or fair share of uh, emission mitigation needs to be attributed to each country. And uh, this is a concept that is well ingrained in the Paris Agreement. And uh, this does means that, for example, developing countries uh, that have contributed relatively little to the problem, yet have a large potential to mitigate future emissions uh, might want to rely or, or could rely on financial or, or financing from elsewhere. Now, on Monday, I, I read a report that some 800,000 people showed up to plant trees called for by the government in, in India. Are these kinds of small efforts going to help the overall picture? Well, 
the climate mitigation challenge or the challenge to limit warming to, be, to well below 2 degrees or further to 1.5 is really huge. And there is not really a, a single silver bullet solution that will bring us there. So in a way, yes, uh, every small step uh, does help and does contribute to a solution. On the other hand, uh, it only by planting trees we will not get there. The kind of transitions that we need in the way that we produce energy, in the way that we transport our, ourselves, even in our agricultural system, are much larger than just a few trees. All right. I thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Rogel, today. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network. 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 Network.